Roger, just want to bring something to your attention. It was something I saw that Andy Wright brought up on his channel. Uh, if you haven't seen Andy Wright's channel, I'll put the descriptions and uh, links below. Uh, but stop across there, because he's now doing the Thai Vloggers review that, of course, um, our friend Cowboy Ray was doing. But anyway, Andy's doing it now. And recently he featured um, a bloke, English bloke, same as himself, by the name of Max Milne. And Andy gave him the Naive Person of the Year Award. Huh? And I thought, oh, at first, you know, that's a bit harsh. But then when I watched um, the clips that he showed of Max's uh, vlog, um, I thought, ah, yes, Andy, you've got a good point there, mate. You've got a good point. And it was all about scooters. Well, not all about scooters, but it featured scooters. And his troubles with said scooter. Okay, that's my one I've got on rental. So yeah, have a look at the excerpt that uh, Andy shows us and uh, you'll see what I mean. But essentially, what, it, what he's, the trouble he's having is he notices that uh, driving around in Thailand is uh, completely different than driving around in England. No. Yes, okay, they drive on the same side as the road as we do in England, which is the correct side of the road, actually. Yep, it's the correct side of the road. Um, and there are some similarities. There are some road signs that look sort of similar. Uh, the traffic light system sort of similar-ish, apart from the countdown timers. Um, so yes, there are a few similarities, but that's where it starts to end because the way tyres drive is completely different. Um, they use a lot of peripheral vision, especially on scooters. Um, and when you're driving down a road, any road, it'd be a quiet road like this, or a busy road uh, in Bangkok, anywhere. What will happen is you'll be driving along and they will just start pulling out. They won't be looking really, they'll just be pulling out. Now in my country, you'd have to stop, wait for the traffic to go, then pull out. But over here, they won't. They just edge out slowly and go. And they're going off the fact that you have seen them and you will move to accommodate them. So bear that in mind. Um, a lot of people have a real problem with it. I don't, but then I've been, especially a bike rider, motorcycle rider, for quite a few years now. I'm no expert, don't get me wrong. But I've been around a bit, and I know a few tricks, and, you know, you can, you've got a bit of road craft and a bit of experience. So for me, it's not so bad. There's always that time where you get caught out, always. Um, and you've just got to, you know, try and be as ready as possible for whatever situation. Um, you know, road conditions, because out here, some of the potholes and some of the divots in the road, they're not, you know, they're bad. So you've got to watch out for all these sort of things, weather conditions, you know, that can be any anything. All them sort of things, anything you can, you know, think of. But um, what Max pulls up on is the fact that, yeah, okay, the, the highway code out here is, is nowhere as good as in my country. Uh, well, yes, mate, um, it, it ain't gonna be because it just ain't out here. Anyone jumps on a scooter from the age of 10 upwards and they're off. You know, I don't think they've ever, I don't think they ever have a, a driving test. Um, and another thing he points out is, because um, a lot of these scooters are twist and go. Some have got gears, you know, they'll step through gears. A lot of them now, especially some of the scooters, are just twist and go. And I think he says, he's, he says, oh, uh, here's a tip, don't hold on to the throttle while you're pulling the brake. No! Oh my word. I can't believe someone would actually do that. I mean, sorry to give you a bash in here, uh, Max, but this, this highlights what I want to say is, which I've already commented on before, but I've got to say this again, it's not always the tie drivers and riders that you've got to watch out for, it's fellow Farangs. It's fellow foreigners like yourself in this country. Because the thing is, like, some, like Max, I think, don't usually ride a bike or scooter or moped in your own country, but you come out to another country, especially Thailand, and you might have the facility on your license for it, but if you haven't passed the tests properly or ridden a bike regularly, people just jump on a scooter out here think they're Superman and carry on where you know someone like myself who is a bike rider and has been for quite a few years it's nothing really but don't do it <coughs> if you can't ride a bike in your own country or you don't really ride a bike in your own country please do not come out here jump on a scooter and think you're Superman don't do it 
just don't do it because you're a danger to the tyres and you're a danger to your, your, your fellow travellers. You really are because also, if you have an accident, what happens then? Have you, does your travel insurance cover you for that? Do you have, have you told your travel insurance you'll be using a scooter? Have they asked for a copy of your license? Think about it. If you have an accident, whose fault's that gonna be? You're a loser. And you gotta try and get scraped off the road and taken into a, a Thai hospital. And does your medical cover, cover you for that? Your travel insurance as well. Think about it, people. It's just, you know, just be a bit, bit more savvy, a bit more savvy about it. And, uh, you know, be careful, be careful. Also, as I've said in a previous vlog, what I also do is get a laminate copy of my passport, like that, and carry that with me at all times. And then also, I'm on the older license, but take a laminate copy of your driving license, take that with you at all times. And especially from my country, you can get them, I suppose you can from whatever country you're from, but get an international driving permit. And I always have a laminate copy of that with me also, and also something else that I've been asked for at police checkpoints before when I've been stopped is the rental agreement. In Chiang Mai, if you remember that year, I got stopped 10 times in a day. One policeman asked me for the copy of the rental agreement. So after that, I always bring that with me as well. So then you can prove it's not your bike, it's a rental bike. And also on this trip, I actually got stopped uh, two days ago and I got all those documents out, showed the policeman, he said, have you got your license with you? I said, yeah, 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 it's all there, there you go. He went, oh, good, good, good. And then he wanted to see something else. Huh? What, what does he want to see now? I've showed him all the documents. And then he flipped the seat up on the scooter, and then he was looking for that. He had a look at that. Just move my cap out of the way. Yeah, he was looking for that. He went, oh, good, good, good. And then he looked at this as well. Now, I don't know what it is, because it's in Thai, but he was looking at that. So wherever that, that is, the policeman wanted to see it. I think the one with 2561 or might be some sort of road tax or something like that. And that bit of paper, he wanted to see it. But wherever they was, he went, oh, good. And he was happy then. And he went, oh, good, and waved me on my way. And also something else that you must do is when you are renting your scooter, always get a helmet, half decent looking one, that fits. The amount of times you see uh, fellow Farangs riding around and it doesn't fit right, they just sort of roughly have it on the red, the strap's not on, and you think, something happens, that comes straight up, your head's cracked open like a Brazil nut. No good whatsoever. So wear your helmet as well, because that's what the police are looking for. That's the first thing they're looking for. They see Farang, no helmet. They think, easy money, brilliant. That's going in my pocket. So finds money, that's what they're looking for. So always wear your helmet. And then when you are renting your scooter, make sure they've got a half decent one, all right, they're all going to be used. But, you know, some, you look at them and you think, oh, no, 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 no. I mean, the place I rented it from, they, they tried giving me one, and the strap, the buckle was broken, and it was just tied. And it's like, use your common sense, get a half decent looking lid, and always wear it. Yeah, it's hot. Yeah, it might look a bit silly, but it saves you a load of grief. So do that as well and also obviously when you get in your scooter make sure the lights work and it's got half decent brakes and the the tires you know obvious things if it's leaking any fluids them sort of things saves you a world of trouble so yeah sorry to uh give you a bit of a, a little bit of a bash in there uh max but um you brought up a couple of good points there and i thought i'd just you know address it and just to keep you a lot safe really that's the main thing because then you're not getting no accidents with me, other fellow Farangs or tyres, and you can enjoy your holiday and then come home perfectly fine. That's what it's all about, and it will be good memory. So, uh, yeah, just a little tip there for you folks. <laughs>